Chapter 11. Great Strength. Translator. Radiant Editor. Radiant. You, you, Lion Man Tong San looked at the large magic beast's skeleton in disbelief. Shui Ying, did you cut off and hide the meat? Where did you hide it? Tong San searched every corner of the dining room. He even kneeled on the ground and checked under the table and cabinet. Uncle Tong, I ate it all. Shui Ying tried to convince him. You really ate it? It weighed more than 5,000 kilograms. You are so small, yet you ate it all. Tong San stared at Shui Ying, how can I believe this? Even a knight cannot eat more than 5,000 kilograms of meat in one go. Let alone you. Dong Bo Shui Ying felt helpless. This was the first biological leap he had experienced, every one of his cells was craving energy. That was why he was able to eat so much. Even if he wanted to, he would not be able to eat so much in the future. Uncle Tong, look. Dong Bo Shui Ying picked up a silver plate near him and suddenly squeezed it hard twice. The plate was compressed into a metal ball. This, Tong San stared dumbfounded. Dong Bo Shui Ying took the metal ball into his right hand. He squeezed it again and silver liquid flowed out from gaps between his fingers. After that, Shui Ying folded and rubbed his hands. A silver stick appeared. How did you do that? Tong San couldn't believe it. Even he and Zong Ling could not do that. If he pressed hard, he could crack the plate and reshape it into a ball. Squeezing the metal until it flowed like a liquid, or even reforming it into a stick, was really terrifying. I said, I ate all the meat. Dong Bo Shui Ying said, Will you believe me now, Uncle Zong? Sure, sure. I believe whatever you say. What on earth is going on? How did you suddenly become so powerful? This, this is simply. I cannot figure it out. Tong San was quite confused. Usually, one could not skip ranks. The order progressed from human rank to earth rank, from earth rank to heaven rank, and then from heaven rank to meteor rank. You don't have any doji and you are not a human knight yet. How is this possible? Tong San could hardly understand this. I am now. Dong Bo Shui Ying stood up, Uncle Zong, wait a moment. As he said this, Dong Bo Shui Ying started practicing the fist technique in the spacious room. Each gesture and motion flowed like water. His body was filled with strength and flooded by energies from the heavens and earth. An amazing power emerged in his muscles, a power called Do Chi. In fact, after he ate all of the meat, his body had already started generating some Do Chi. Gurgle gurgle gurgle. As Dong Bo Shui Ying practiced the three stages flame technique, his body gathered more and more Do Chi and imbued itself into his skin, muscles, and bones. The mysterious power of the heavens and the earth began to unceasingly enter his body while his body continuously transformed due to the Do Chi. It was as if his body was a bottomless pit. He kept practicing the Do Chi technique over and over again. In the beginning, Tong San was shocked and worried, but after some time passed, he was able to gradually calm down. However, for hours quickly passed by, and he began to feel somewhat powerless. Why are you still practicing? How long do you plan on practicing? Tong San looked at Dong Bo Shui Ying in puzzlement. It must be said that practicing a Do Chi technique more doesn't necessarily mean greater gains. Before becoming a knight, only two or three practice sessions a day were needed as though the body would be unable to absorb anymore, but after becoming a knight, it still took a very long time for the Do Chi to increase. There was a limit to the amount of Do Chi that one can absorb each day. Therefore, the number of practices was limited too, but Dong Bo Shui Ying had already been practicing for more than four hours. This was clearly abnormal. Hong Long Long Tilde 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 Dong Bo Shui Ying felt all of the Do Chi within his body bubbling in excitement. At last, 
he could no longer absorb any more of the power of the heavens and the earth. I never would have thought I would break through so quickly, and that I would become an earth knight the moment I broke through. Dong Bo Shui Ying secretly said to himself. Of course, it's only natural that my Dou Qi has reached the rank of an earth knight. My physical strength already far surpasses that of an earth knight. According to the normal path. When the body first produced a strand of Dou Qi, they would then become a human knight. Afterwards, Dou Qi would begin appearing in their muscles and bones and gradually nourish them. The Dou Qi would grow more and more until it could finally be found throughout the muscles and bones. Only then would they become an earth knight. After the Dou Qi covered the whole body, it would begin condensing within the abdomen into a Qi ocean within the Dantian. This was the sign of a heaven knight. When Dou Qi condensed into a liquid and started flowing within the Dantian's Qi ocean, one would become a meteor knight. After liquefying the Dou Qi, a noticeable change would occur in the Dou Qi. It would no longer be fierce and hard. Rather, it would become both hard and soft. By mixing strength with gentleness, a meteor knight would be able to form a tenacious layer of Dou Qi on the surface of the body to protect themselves. This was the reason why meteor knights could simply ignore a barrage of countless arrows. While this Dou Qi layer had high defensive capabilities, it could also be used to nourish the body and strengthen it. If the liquid Dou Qi condensed even further, it would form a false dan. This form of Dou Qi was even more profound and powerful. It was so soft that it could enter the tender inner organs, causing the body to transform once again. This was the trait of a silver moon knight. But a legend knight? They must reach the realm of being one with the heavens. When that moment came, they will be able to draw upon the power of the heavens and the earth. Only then would they truly be legend knights. A legend knight was completely different from a silver moon knight. The gap was exceedingly astonishing. They could kill a silver moon knight with a single strike. Legend knights represented the very limits of mortals. Only a few peak legend knights could even battle a transcendent and survive. They were the last step before becoming a transcendent. My body's muscles and bones are both perfect due to my needless nourishment of it. It was due to this that I could immediately reach the rank of an earth knight. Dong Bo Shui Ying said to himself. The next step is to establish the Dou Qi spring. I must now slowly accumulate enough Dou Qi. Shui Ying, Shui Ying. Tong San began shouting as soon as he saw that Shui Ying had stopped. Ha ha. Uncle Tong, come with me. Dong Bo Shui Ying said with a smile before immediately exiting the dining hall and leaping down from the building. Tong San swiftly followed him and jumped down. It was extremely fast. Two figures arrived at the empty martial grounds. Shui Ying, why have you come to the martial grounds? Tong San asked in bewilderment. Don't be so anxious Uncle Tong. Saying this, Dong Bo Shui Ying ran to the side and picked up the spear he usually used. This spear weighed over 25 kilograms and could be considered the best spear within Snow Rock Mountain. Dong Bo Shui Ying grasped the pike and fixed his attention on the alchemic dummy in front of him. Tong San held his breath and watched attentively off to the side. He understood that his nephew wanted to reveal his strength. He wanted to see what level of strength Shui Ying had reached when putting his spear techniques to use. Shua! The spear moved, becoming a mirage. The afterimages of the spear collided with the alchemic dummy, repeatedly releasing a P.U., P.U., P.U. sound. In an instant, Dong Bo Shui Ying had already stopped his spear. So fast! Shui Ying, your spear technique is so fast! Now even I cannot block it. Tong San was stunned by the speed of Dong Bo Shui Ying's spear technique. Immediately after he looked at the alchemic dummy, and his eyes widened even more. Densely packed holes appeared on the body of the alchemic dummy, the large numbers of holes forming three words isn't this amazing. 
You're able to pierce through its body? Tong San asked, his eyes filled with astonishment. Anyone under the star rank would absolutely be unable to harm this alchemic dummy. Then I'll let you see something even more amazing. Dong Bo Shui Ying suddenly let the power within his body burst out, there was a faint red vapor surrounding him. A ferocious atmosphere erupted around him, terrifying Tong San. Dong Bo Shui Ying brandished his spear and struck the alchemic dummy. The spear bent into a ridiculous curve, and with a peng, the dummy trembled and cracked. Peng! With a second strike, the dummy immediately shattered, pieces of it flying everywhere. Only the lower half of the dummy was left. Peng! The spear struck the alchemic dummy a third time at its foundation. Pa! The entire spear fractured. The lower body of the dummy broke into pieces. Dong Bo Shui Ying stared at the broken spear in his hand. It was a spear that he had used for a long time. He never thought his strength would have been able to break it. Brother I'm back, little brother Ching Xia's clear voice was heard. Dong Bo Shui Ying lifted his head to look at the sky. It had turned dark. Uncle Tong, Ching Xia, and Uncle Zong are back. Let's go eat first. I'll tell you and Uncle Zong everything after we eat. Dong Bo Shui Ying said with a smile. Had it been anyone else who had come across this matter, perhaps they? Chapter 12 The Primordial Era Translator, Radiant Editor, Radiant All right. Tong San just had to bear with his curiosity. After dinner, he would be able to find out. He was patient enough to wait. Brother, I am back. Ching Xia and Zhong Ling rode on the Frost Pegasus, leading the group of soldiers home and showing off their military might. The Water Rights Town was the most unlawful town in the whole country. In Water Rights Town, the Shui Ying Territory's Dongbo clan was one of the top ten clans. Therefore, whenever Ching Xia went to visit the Water Rights Town, there was a great amount of fanfare due to his dominant status. Seeing his brother spending every day happily, Dong Bo Shui Ying couldn't help but also be joyous. After dinner, Ching Shi tired quickly and fell asleep because he had played the whole day. Meanwhile, Dong Bo Shui Ying, Zong Ling, and Tong San went to the study room. What are we doing in Shui Ying's study room? Tong San, why do you have such an excited and impatient expression? What is going on? Zong Ling said in confusion. Dong Bo Shui Ying smiled and walked to the shelves to find a book he had read before. Let me tell you. Tong San took a deep breath. Today, Shui Ying ordered the servants to roast the 5,000 kilogram rank 3 magic beast, and then he ate it all by himself. Zong Ling's eyes went wide. Just one person ate 5,000 kilograms of meat. Was he even human? He should be a gigantic dragon instead. With his current strength, he would be able to defeat us in one strike. Tong San continued to say, a moment ago, the alchemic dummy in the martial grounds was destroyed by Shui Ying's spear after three hits, and Shui Ying's spear also could not handle his strength and broke. What? Zong Ling was shocked. Shui Ying's 25 kilogram spear was also made by a great refiner. Even though it was not a ranked weapon, it should still have been qualified for a heaven knight to use. Moreover, the spear's barrel body was very good at containing power. Just how much force did he exert on the spear for it to break? How did this happen? Zong Ling asked. I also want to know, but Shui Ying said that he would only tell us when we came together. Tong San and Zong Ling looked towards Shui Ying. Dong Bo Shui Ying browsed the books on the shelf and soon found the book. He quickly flicked through the pages until he found the page he had previously read. He then used his finger to mark a part of the page and smiled as he handed the book to Zong Ling Uncle Zong and Uncle Tong, it's this biography. Please, if you take a look at that paragraph, you should be able to understand. Hem? Zong Ling curiously took it. 
Tong San moved his head to also have a look. Zong Ling looked at the title of the book, The Woodcutter Knight. It's him, The Woodcutter Knight? Zong Ling and Tong San were a little startled. Although they did not read many books, during their adventures they had heard many legendary stories. Amongst those stories, the Woodcutter Knight story was very common. This Woodcutter Knight was a knight who lived 5,000 years ago and was heralded for his strength. He was originally just a mountain village's woodcutter. After stepping onto the path of the knight, however, he used only an axe to kill transcendents while only at the legend rank. During the era where transcendents were abundant, he was unequalled among them. His titled name was Woodcutter was personally chosen. He was called that period's strongest transcendent as no transcendent could resist his axe. It was that frightening. First take a look at this paragraph. Dong Bo Shui Ying smiled. During his childhood, he had also revered the woodcutter knight for a long time because the knight's powers were extremely domineering. Throughout his life, he loved to cut wood and even treated his enemies like wood. No matter if it was a huge dragon or an evil demon, he would just cut them down. En. Zong Ling looked at the paragraph along with Tong San. Yes, at that moment, the woodcutter knight awakened the legendary giant axe bloodline that resided in his body. He explained in his writings that all of the human race's bodies actually hold countless bloodlines. During the birth of this world, the entire surface of this area, where this country is currently located, was actually empty. At that time, the world was very vile. The face of the earth went through a long, gradual period of nurturing until the earth finally gave birth to a group of formidable life forms. They were the primordial era's first life forms. All of them held terrifying powers strong enough to move mountains and fill oceans. They could carry huge mountains as they ran about. They would kill gigantic dragons and drank its blood and eat its meat. In front of them, the dragon was really weak. Even the gods of other planes did not dare to descend. After those strong life forms continuously flourished, the human race. However, according to the book, awakening the bloodline is an amazing feat almost nobody succeeds after that, as it's almost impossible to become a transcendent. The reason why I respect the woodcutter knight is because he regarded his own bloodline with tranquility, ultimately becoming the strongest transcendent of his time period. When the woodcutter knight awakened his primordial giant axe bloodline, he met the most important woman of his life. The author wrote in detail about his life thereafter. In the whole thick diary, only that short paragraph was related to primordial bloodlines. After that, it was about the woodcutter knight's legendary life. Primordial bloodline? Zong Ling and Tong San looked at Dong Bo Shui Ying. Yes, it should be that I awakened my primordial bloodline. Dong Bo Shui Ying said. Which bloodline? Zong Ling asked curiously. Could it be the one that can teleport? Tong San was excited. Let me see you create lighting. Let me see you bring forth fire. I don't know how to. Dong Bo Shui Ying helplessly said. There were many types of primordial bloodlines. After all, there was a whole group of primordial beings that the earth had first given birth to. His awakening was relatively ordinary. This book says that every primordial bloodline has some kind of specialty. Zong Ling said. Actually, the unusual methods to utilize the powers are very harsh, Dong Bo Shui Ying said. My special power allows my strength to be doubled. Doubled. Zong Ling and Tong San's hearts started to burn with excitement. They also wanted such special powers. Which knight would not wish for their strength to be doubled? Even if there was no teleportation or shape-shifting power, to be able to double one's strength was still very useful. However, once I use my power, my physical strength will also be consumed quickly. Dong Bo Shui Ying said, normally I can battle for an hour and remain tireless, but once I use my power, 
I will be completely drained of my strength in a short moment so my fighting time will be limited. What is your current level of strength? Zhong Ling curiously asked. In ordinary battle, my strength should be at about the meteor knight rank. Dong Bo Shui Ying said. Once you use your power and double your strength, won't you reach the power of a silver moon knight? Zhong Ling and Tong San were elated. Although my power increases greatly, my speed won't be able to compare to that of a silver moon knight. Moreover, I can only remain in that state for a short period of time. Dong Bo Shui Ying smiled. So it's like that. Currently you are the strongest person in the whole water rights town, Zhong Ling expectantly said. Ha ha, it was as I said. Shui Ying, you are so diligent in your training and trained in your spear techniques for about ten years, for you to not generate Dou Qi is clearly very abnormal. You really did not reveal your power, but now you that you have, it's so shocking. Dong Bo Shui Ying smiled. Actually, after this awakening, Dong Bo Shui Ying had his own thoughts. Every human had primordial bloodlines hidden within them, but after reproducing for so many years, their bloodlines were too thin now. If so, why can some people still awaken their bloodlines? Dong Bo Shui Ying did not have many examples to refer to, but from the woodcutter knight, he could still make an inference. The knight was a man who had always liked to chop firewood and who, in the end, awakened the huge axe bloodline. Also, whenever he himself finished training in spear techniques till the very limits of his arm and finger strengths, he would need to soak in medical baths to recover. Maybe he awakened the power of his bloodline because he did his utmost every day. In the end, Dong Bo Shui Ying did not know who the towering roaring giant he vaguely saw during his awakening was, so he just gave his primordial bloodline a simple name, Power Bloodline. This is just the beginning. Dong Bo Shui Ying said, it is similar to an ordinary person's body. When nourishing themselves with Dou Qi, they will unceasingly improve. When nourishing myself with Dou Qi, I can also feel my body continuously strengthening. Ha ha ha. Zhong Ling and Tong San smiled. Today they were very happy. At the time when the originally young boy shouted his oath, they had only thought of it as a child's dream. Nobody present at that time was convinced that Dong Bo Shui Ying could actually rescue his parents, the task was just too difficult. Today, however, the two of them could finally see hope. That's right. After today, I will not need to soak in the medicinal bath. Dong Bo Shui Ying smiled and said, although my body is not quite immortal, my recovery ability is a lot stronger than that of the medicinal bath. As he said that, Dong Bo Shui Ying took a paper cutter from the desk and cut a line on his palm. With the influence of the medicinal bath, it would have taken a day to fully heal. Chapter 13. Going to Town. Translator, Radiant Editor, Radiant. Go to Water Rights Town. Zhong Ling and Tong San said in excitement. It was rare to hear this from Dong Bo Shui Ying because in the past, Dong Bo Shui Ying couldn't afford to be distracted and he was always practicing hard. He seldomly traveled, it was rare for him to visit Water Rights Town even once a year. Shui Ying. Are you going to buy some weapons? Zhong Ling suddenly asked. Dong Bo Shui Ying immediately smiled. Uncle, I would have forgotten to do that if you hadn't mentioned it. I really should get a new spear. This time, I'm going to water Wright's town, because it's almost New Year. After the New Year, Ching Shu is going to be ten years old. He can't keep playing this way and I had promised him earlier that I would find him a magic teacher when he turned ten so that he could start learning. Well, a magic teacher is extremely important, Zhong Ling and Tong San said seriously. A mage was knowledgeable and wise. Without a good teacher, learning by oneself would make it difficult to become a knowledgeable and wise mage. Not to mention, advanced magic techniques involve the spirit. Being reckless might damage one's own spirit, and once that happened, it would be too late for regrets. 
In all of Water White's town, there is only one mage, Bai Yuan Shi, said Dong Bo Shui Ying. Bai Yuan Shi is living in the town, so I plan on asking him to accept my brother as his personal disciple. A personal disciple, questioned Zong Ling with worry. I'm afraid this might be quite difficult. A mage's guidance focused on teaching of all aspects of knowledge and thoughts. The relationship between a mage and their personal disciple was one comparable to that of a parent and child. Because of this, powerful mags preferred to accept random disciples, nonchalantly telling their disciples that their results depended on how much effort they put in themselves. A personal disciple received more careful guidance, so a powerful mage could only accept a few throughout his life. This was because even a powerful mage needed to spend time practicing on their own, taking too many personal disciples would interfere with this. How would I know what might happen if I don't try? Dong Bo Shui Ying laughed. Two days later. After all was said and done, he was an expert who had almost reached the Spear Master Realm. Even though his strength had risen drastically, after adapting for two days, Dong Bo Shui Ying had already grown accustomed to it. He took his brother, as well as a hundred cavalrymen, and headed towards Water Wright's town. I haven't come to town with my big brother in a long time, Ching Shi said excitedly. Dong Bo Shui Ying rode on the frost pegasus with Ching Shi sitting excitedly in between Dong Bo Shui Ying's arms. As a rank 2 magic beast, the flight of the frost pegasus was extremely smooth. Moreover, the current pace of the frost pegasus could barely even be considered a trot. After all, he had to let the cavalrymen in the back keep up with them. If he allowed the frost pegasus to frantically fly, he feared that it would vanish in the blink of an eye. After little more than half an hour, a towering city came into sight. The castle was only fifty kilometers away from the water rights town. When his parents had chosen to settle, they chose a territory near the city. Shui Ying's territory's edges were all close to the city. It's the Snow Eagle territory's cavalry. Water Wright's town's lazy guards heard a rumble as they looked into the distance where the cavalry was headed towards them. All of the cavalrymen carried star-breaking crossbows, a distinctive mark of the Snow Eagle territory. At the front is the Snow Eagle territory's young lords, in Shui Ying's arms is his brother Qingxia. I didn't expect that the young lord would visit the town. It's rare for him to come. His little brother comes here often, I saw him several times during the last month. These guards stood talking to each other on opposite sides of the entrance as the cavalry entered the city. It had been over 9,000 years since the founding of the empire. As a result, the lowest level city guards had become complacent long ago, and were only able to intimidate some small bandits. Some great lords were so ferocious that even the powerful bandits didn't dare to provoke them. It's Snow Eagle Territory's young lords. Make way. Make some room. The townspeople were curious to see what was going on, so all of them made way as this was one of Water Wright's town's top ten families, and a lord who was personally traveling here. This was considered a big spectacle. Shuming Good Store. One particular giant store's front was very eye catching. Just here. Nay tilde 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 dong bo shui ying reined in his horse and ordered, everyone is to wait for me outside. Yes, my lord. The soldiers respectfully replied. Uncle, let's go in. Dong bo shui ying gave his horse's reins to one of his men. He held his brother's hand as they entered the store. Although it said it was a good store, but the store was hundreds of square meters large and had dozens of clerks and customers. This was the largest, and therefore best, place to buy weapons in Water Wright's town. In the end, Water Wright's town is just a counter-level town. Few people can buy refiner weapons, Zong Ling laughed. A rank 2 refiner weapon requires several tens of thousands gold coins and is worth as much as the entire Snow Eagle territory. Just how many nobles in Water Wright's town can buy one? If you want to buy one, I'm afraid that you must go to a prefecture city. 
Even specialists will go to the provincial capital to buy one. Most of these aren't ranked. A rank 1 refiner weapon would be considered the peak here. Or perhaps, there are rank 2 refiner weapons in this shop, which the shop would consider as treasures. Dong Bo Shui Ying nodded slightly. His own spear that had been broken earlier could not be fixed. So this is the legendary Snow Eagle Territory's Dong Bo Shui Ying, ha ha. I've long heard of this little brother's big name before, but this is the first time I've met you. Clad in a purple robe, a middle-aged man entered while laughing. Shui Ying, this is the owner of the store, Ao Quan Shuming, Zhong Ling introduced. Nice to meet you, Ao Quan. Dong Bo Shui Ying smiled. The number of powerful figures in Water Rights Town could be counted with one's fingers, and Quan Shuming was one of them. This person was once a great merchant who had a large business outside, but because he had been unwilling to always rush about, when the chance came, he returned home. Afterwards, he had bought land and opened a store in the city. It was said that the store had all kinds of rare treasures and weaponry and so on. Nevertheless, it was best in the entire Water Rights town. From the sheer number of treasures, one could see the power the store held. I'm older, so I'll call you little brother Shui Ying, the purple-robed, middle-aged man laughed, lit brother, what have you come to my shop to buy? A spear, said Dong Bo Shui Ying. Show us your best spear, said Zhong Ling. Yes, the best, bring out your best, said an excited Ching Shu beside them. Ha ha. So bold. However, when all is said and done, my store is only a small store. I only have three spears that can be considered the very best here. After hearing their request, the purple-robed middle-aged man humbly thought within his heart, most people don't have the strength to use a ranked refiner weapon, so it seems that this young lord is rather powerful. Perhaps he has even stepped into the realm of the heaven knights. He turned around and instructed, go get our best three spears for my little brother Shui Ying to choose from. Shui Ying, little brother, let us head inside first to sit down and leisurely talk. By then, quite a few guests had noticed Dong Bo Shui Ying and had quietly begun to talk about him. Although Shui Ying rarely entered the town, the town people still frequently discussed about him. He had become the lord of a territory at eight years old, and reportedly, he practiced his spearmanship every single day as if he had been possessed. Some people also said that his parents were arrested, but others claimed that they were killed. There were all kinds of rumors, some more outrageous than others. Within the room. Tea and pastries were served while they chatted lightly. Six maids brought in three ancient weapons with two maids carrying a weapon case between them. Open them all and let little brother Shui Ying have a look, ordered the middle-aged man clad in a purple robe. Pun pun pun. All three weapon boxes were opened. Dong Bo Shui Ying's eyes immediately lit up when he viewed the weapons. Chapter 14, Flying Snow God Spear. Translator, Radiant Editor, Radiant. The purple-robed middle-aged man saw Shui Ying secretly nod to himself. In fact, the citizens of Water Rights had given Shui Ying a nickname, Demon Spear. It referred to how he trained his spear so much that he seemed to have been possessed by demon. Actually, this nickname wasn't that malicious, but it wasn't exactly complimentary either. However, that purple-robed man had experienced many things in his life and could clearly understand that the world was a vast place. The true rulers were those who were strong, like those unimaginable legend rank existences, or even those transcendent beings. Only true cultivators who were assiduous on the path of cultivation could even hope of becoming an existence of that rank. As a result, he wasn't willing to offend individuals who were extremely diligent. Good spears, Shui Ying said as his eyes swept over them. From the faint chi emitted from the spears, he could sense the spiritual nature of each spear. This was important because he would naturally begin to resonate with the spear after carrying it morning and night. There were three spears, each divided into two parts. 
After all, spears were simply too long to be stored in the box. Only by splitting them into two parts would they fit in the boxes and be less of a burden to carry. The shortest a whole spear could be was two meters, anything shorter would simply be too cumbersome to wield. My brother Shui Ying, let me introduce these spears to you. All three of these spears were personally purchased by me, said the purple-robed man. I'll have to bother Ao Quan to do so then. Shui Ying said with a slight nod. Shui Ying didn't feel inclined to understand the ways of the world, his mind only thought about cultivation. Of course, he would not be too rude. This black-colored spear, said the purple-robed man as he pointed at the first spear from the left, is called Black Cloud and is 3.2 meters long. It can be considered a best-seller outside of this town, and a lot of nobles wish to buy it. As for its advantages, try it yourself and you will know. Oh. Shui Ying's brows creased slightly. The spear was too long so he didn't really like it. He stepped forward, picked up the two parts and rapidly rotating them until they fit together. Who? With a single hand, he threw it. With only a single hand, Shui Ying was able to throw a spear weighing more than 50 kilograms perfectly straight. The spear flew into the distance, piercing the air like it was splitting it open. Off to the side, the two maids' complexions turned pale with fright. Inwardly, the purple-robed man was alarmed. What great strength! His spear technique is so formidable. It's flexible, too flexible, Shui Ying said as he shook his head. This black cloud is too long, and its thin neck causes the spear's head to dance about. Although a true expert would want the spear's head to dance about, this movement must be completely controlled. The movement of a spear's head can't be due to the spear being too flexible. Naturally, those who weren't adept in spearmanship wouldn't be able to see the sudden thrust of a three-meter-long spear and its dancing head. All of a sudden, they would have a hole in them. Therefore, only those lords who don't properly practice the spear would view this as a good weapon. Shui Ying voiced his evaluation out loud. At the age of thirteen he had already reached the realm of one with the spear, but now, he had already touched the realm of a great spear master. Shui Ying could determine the strengths and weaknesses of a spear after only briefly testing it. This black cloud spear was an excellent weapon for those weak in spearmanship. It would even let their strength increase greatly. But for those adept in spearmanship, they wouldn't even bother looking at it. So amazing, simply so amazing. Ha ha. I have met some true experts outside before, and they too didn't even bother to look at this black cloud spear that all those silk trousers nobles are so fond of. The purple-robed man pointed to the dark violet spear on the other side. This spear is called amethyst blood. This is a true spear for experts. It's 2.5 meters long and is thick enough for a hand to wrap completely around it. The tip is exceedingly sharp since it's a spear meant for killing. It's said that the dark violet color of this spear came from blood settling into it after countless slaughters. Your sales pitch makes it sound incredible, Shui Ying said as he picked up amethyst blood. As soon as he held it, a faint fondness grew within his heart. Then, he began brandishing it as he pleased. Who? The spear struck outwards in a sweeping motion, filling the expansive room with a whistling gale. Immediately afterwards, he swung the pike forward and thrust the spear furiously in a flash. Shui Ying moved as he pleased, the movement something ordinary spear experts absolutely couldn't. There was actually a rank 2 refiner weapon in Water Wright's town. Its whole body is ice cold, this refiner spear is called Flying Snow stated the purple-robed man. Its main advantage is seen when practicing spear techniques. A scene of countless snowflakes fluttering in the wind will appear and confuse the enemy. I'll test it. Shui Ying picked up the two parts of the spear and assembled it before he began testing it. The purple-robed man was a little nervous. Generally, each refiner weapon had its own advantages. For example, it could be faster, sharper, 
possess fire attribute and so on. As for this flying snow spear, it only caused some snowflakes to appear and confused the enemy. However, how could snowflakes possibly confuse a true expert? A true expert could easily distinguish the spear's point from amongst the snowflakes. This was why this rank 2 refiner weapon could appear in this town. As for the weapon's origin, it was during the days when Old Quan traded outside. He had met an old beggar who he felt was quite extraordinary, so he provided the beggar with food and drink for three years. At the end of those three years, the old beggar started up a furnace and refined a spear for him. He had said, this is the flying snow spear. It should be enough to repay you for the food and drink you have provided me. After repaying him, the old beggar left. At that time, he had thought that this spear was an amazing godly weapon. After testing it, he discovered it was a rank 2 refiner weapon, but it didn't have any amplification effects. Naturally, it still exceeded the value of the food and drink he had provided. Who tilde Sai tilde? Grasping the silver spear, Shui Ying tested ten moves before stopping. His face wore an expression of tranquility, yet his heart was stirred. An excellent spear. This truly was an excellent spear. Even an expert at the realm of one with the spear would find it hard to understand the true value of the spear. Shui Ying, on the other hand, had spent these last few years practicing his fist technique to the realm of one with strength. It was only because of this that he was able to discover the profound mysteries of the spear. But Shui Ying couldn't speak of this, he had to haggle for it. He truly didn't have the money to buy a rank to refine a weapon. This spear's not bad. It's worthy of being called a rank to refine a weapon. Shui Ying said as he looked towards the purple-robed man. But I feel that it doesn't have any special qualities aside from the snowflake illusion. All refiner weapons have some special qualities. Some increase magic power, some are extremely sharp and so on, but this spear doesn't have any of that, it only confuses the enemy. Don't tell me that a true expert wouldn't be able to distinguish between the snowflakes and the spear's tip. The reason it's rated as a rank 2 refiner weapon is because it should be enough to bear a battle between legend rankers, stated Shui Ying. In regards to those of us with feeble strength, it would be better to just get a rank 1 refiner weapon. A rank 1 refiner weapon would be fine for any battles below the legend rank. A close quarters battle between legend ranks could frighten the heavens and move the earth. Most rank 1 refiner weapons would break under such circumstances. At the moment, Shui Ying could increase his strength to the rank of a silver moon knight, and not too long into the future, he would definitely achieve the might of a legend rank. If it was a rank 1 refiner weapon, he feared that he wouldn't be able to use it for too long. This was the reason he wanted to obtain flying snow. Of course, the most important thing was the profound mysteries contained within the spear. It's a rank 2 refiner weapon when all said and done, and I can see that you really like it, said the purple-robed man. Name your price, said Shui Ying. 30,000 gold coins. The purple-robed man readily said. Shui Ying smiled. In fact, he felt helpless within his heart. This was because the Dongbo clan only had 15,000 gold coins left. Furthermore, this money was from Uncle Zong. Including their debts, they hadn't had any money since two years ago. The reason for this was the medicinal baths Shui Ying had been taking since he was six years old. He had bathed away all of the money. One year of medicinal baths was the equivalent of 5,000 gold coins, and 10 years of baths was the same as spending 50,000 gold coins. Originally, the Dong Bo couple had assumed that Shui Ying would become a knight at around 10 years old and that he wouldn't need any more medicinal baths then. He would have been able to use Dou Qi to both nourish and restore his body. Who would have thought that Shui Ying wouldn't break through until he was 16 years old? Then what about the amethyst blood? Shui Ying immediately turned his head towards the amethyst blood spear. That one is only 5,000 gold coins, said the purple-robed man. 
that one can't even compare with. Chapter 15, The Request of the Great Mage Translator, Radiant Editor, Radiant Shui Ying picked up the weapon box containing the godly spear, flying snow, and pushed the button on the side of the box. The two parts of the spear popped out from the top. Shui Ying nimbly took the two parts out of the box and then smoothly reinserted them until the box locked itself again. Brother's so cool. Ching Shu said, ice shining. After you became a mage you will be even cooler, said Shui Ying while looking at his brother with a smile. Ha ha, this weapon box is a bonus. The purple-robed middle-aged man said with a smile. He was in a good mood after selling the goods that had stayed in stock for such a long time. There are more mechanisms on the side of the box, so you can put rope or other materials inside of it when you're out on an adventure. The box was very light and was able to hold many things. It did not take long to store or take out heavy or long weapons either. This weapon box is a bonus. Shui Ying smiled and asked, how come the refiner didn't make a box for the flying snow himself? Refiners generally made matching, elegantly decorated cases for the weapons they had made. So why had the refiner not made a case for this weapon? Shui Ying was very curious about the background of this spear. The refiner certainly knew how valuable this spear was. Normally it would be extremely expensive, but Ao Quan had actually traded it for a measly 18,000 gold coins. This made Shui Ying even more curious about its background. Be at ease. I won't cancel my purchase. Shui Ying said. Ha, the man in purple hesitated for a while, then said, My boy Shui Ying, I won't hide this from you. When I was in the merchanting business, before I opened this shop, I met an old beggar. He ate at my place for free. I felt that he was not an ordinary man, so I didn't stop him. Three years later he made a spear, and said it was his payment for the food. After that, he left. I was very excited because this proved that he was indeed an extraordinary figure. When I sent the weapon away for several appraisals, the results all showed that it had a snowflake illusion effect, but few other auxiliary functions. Fortunately, it could resist a great amount of force, so it was appraised as a rank 2 refiner weapon. Shui Ying slightly nodded. After buying his weapon, Shui Ying and the others went to visit the mage by Yuan Shi. The mage's house is located at the end of the alley. Zong Ling said as he pointed at a narrow alley in front of them. Everyone, dismount from your horses and wait here. Uncle Zong, Pebble, let's go. Shui Ying said. Shui Ying grabbed Ching Shi's hand and entered the ancient alley. I never would have thought that by Yuan Shi lived in such a remote place, I expected something more refined. Shui Ying said. The atmosphere in noble areas can be quite pretentious. Here he can more easily focus on on training and studying. They went to the end of the alley. At the end of the alley was an enormous mansion. Shui Ying stepped forward and knocked on the closed door. Shua. A short-haired young boy opened the door and asked, Who are you here for? Shui Ying Territory's Dongbo Shui Ying has come to visit the great mage. Shui Ying said. You're the spear demon? The short-haired youth exclaimed before quickly covering his mouth. Voices resounded from within the mansion. Junior fellow apprentice, who is it? Our teacher is doing closed door studying right now, we wouldn't dare interrupt him. I'm afraid you'll have to wait for an hour, Baron Dongbo, the young boy explained. I will inform you when our teacher comes out. I cannot let you in now. Fine, I'm not in a hurry. Shui Ying said. He was very patient. An hour later. Bai Yuan Shi was wearing a loose white gown. As he was over 90 years old this year, his skin was a little creased, and his long black beard reached down to his stomach. He was surprised that this young man with a weapon box on his back actually had chi that was far too sharp to have come from a normal spear expert. Great mage. Shui Ying said humbly. 
What's the matter? Get to it, I'm busy. Bai Yuan she said bluntly. The great mage is very direct. I'll just say it then, Shui Ying said. My little brother will be ten years old after the new year and he has a very high talent for magic. I really hope you will be willing to act as his teacher. It's easy to accept another disciple, as long as some conditions are met. Bai Yuan she said absent-mindedly. No. Shui Ying shook his head. I wish for my brother to be your personal student and be taught directly by you. Taught by me? By Yuan Shi frowned, I'm over ninety, but that is not considered old amongst mags of the star rank. I still want to go further as a mage, so I don't want to waste too much energy in teaching. I have only taught one student personally up until now. You want your brother to be taught by me? That isn't impossible but I have two requirements. I will teach your brother as long as you satisfy either one. Shui Ying said, please tell me. I'm in dire need of a specific magic beast material, the heart of silver moon. Bai Yuan Ji said excitedly, his eyes shining, it's the heart of a rank for magic beast, the silver moon wolf king. It must be freshly obtained since it can only be preserved for three days. What's the other requirement? Shui Ying asked. The heart of a silver moon wolf king. And it must be fresh. This requirement was too harsh. Being a mage is expensive, by Yuan she exclaimed. I need money to support my research, but it's not easy to make money. I'm willing to accept your brother if you pay me 50,000 gold coins. Only a couple nobles across all of Water Rite's town could afford to pay 50,000 gold coins, and even then, only by selling their lands. But territory was the nobility's foundation, which meant even fewer people had 50,000 gold coins available. Fine, I understand. Shui Ying stood up. Bai Ji Yuan sighed. He knew his demands were unreasonable. I will get you a heart of silver moon or 50,000 gold coins in one month. Shui Ying said. Bai Yuan Shi became dazed for a moment. He actually agreed. Bai Yuan Shi couldn't help but get excited. Then I'll wait for you here. Bai Yuan Shi stood up and started acting more politely. His first student was the child his best friend had left behind. If some requirement of his wasn't satisfied, he would never waste his time on teaching. But his requirements were so demanding that before Shui Ying, nobody had ever agreed. Goodbye. Great mage doesn't need to see us off. Shui Ying stood up and left. Bai Yuan Ji stood near the window and looked down at the yard. Shui Ying left the mansion, holding his brother's hand. The silver-haired six-armed serpent demon accompanied him at his side. It seems that the young lord is not an ordinary man. Bai Yuan Shi smiled. Brother, how was it? Ching Sha asked hopefully. You'll know the result after the new year. Shui Ying smiled, be at ease, Ching Sha. The great mage will accept you as his student. Just wait till the new year. However, Shui Ying was making a plan in his heart. I need to get the heart of a silver moon or 50,000 gold coins in one month. The time limit isn't very tight. There shouldn't be any problems, but I'd rather tell Ching Sha after everything is settled. It wouldn't do to talk big now. Chapter 16, Mountain Range of Desolation Translator, Radiant Editor, Radiant Night Shui Ying Territory, Snow Rock Castle Study room. Dong Bo Shui Ying was sitting at his desk, while Zhong Ling and Tong San seated close by. Shui Ying, you called for us. Tong San asked, a little puzzled. I went to visit the great mage today. He agreed to accept Ching Sha as his personal disciple, but mentioned two requirements we must either bring him the Silver Moon Wolf King's heart, or 50,000 gold coins. If we satisfy either requirement, he will accept Ching Sha. Shui Ying said. 50,000 gold coins. 
Tong San scowled. He really is black-hearted. Your parents, Uncle Zong, and I risked our lives numerous times, but only obtained a few scraps of treasure. If it weren't for that one big windfall after your mother got pregnant, how could your father possibly have bought the title of Earl and the Shui Ying territory? And this great mage dares to ask for 50,000 gold coins as if it is nothing. This amount was truly excessive. Even a meteor knight could generally only afford to pay this amount by selling all of his worldly possessions. Adventurers often visited dangerous places, so the death rate was extremely high. Shui Ying's parents had the good fortune to survive, and even managed to buy a noble title and the lands that went with it. The reason that the other nobles in Water Wright's town never dared to plot against the Snow Eagle territory, despite the possible profits, was because Shui Ying's parents were adventurers, no adventurer feared death, and all of them were extremely cruel. Getting the Wolf King's heart is even more difficult, Zhong Ling said with a frown. If it was merely a rank for Silver Moon Wolf King, with Shui Ying's current strength, he could probably take it down if we assisted him. However, the Wolf King leads a large pack of weaker wolves. Their group attacks are far more frightening than the attacks of the king on its own. The Wolf King wasn't very formidable when fought alone, but its strength lay in the fact that a gigantic pack of wolves followed its every command. Even though the Silver Moon Wolf King was only a rank for Magic Beast, its corpse was no less valuable than that of a rank 5 Magic Beast. I'm preparing to go to the mountain range of desolation. Shui Ying said. No. It's way too dangerous. Tong San and Zong Ling shouted in unison, alarmed by his words. What was the mountain range of desolation? It was the largest mountain range in the world, bordering four provinces. It housed numerous magic beasts and even some transcendent existences. Even after trying for generations, the human empires were unable to erase this large threat. Therefore, armies had been positioned around the base of the mountains in order to defend the human realm. Its troops often slaughtered the lower-ranked beasts at the edge of the mountains on a large scale, so many low-rank materials were sold in markets. As a result, materials from magic beasts from the first to third ranks were relatively cheap, Materials from ranks four and higher, however, would see the prices rise exponentially. This was because rank four magical beasts couldn't be killed by ordinary soldiers. Only the elite of the elite could kill them. Even if a massive army was dispatched, they wouldn't reach much farther than the outer 1,500 km perimeter of the mountains, Zhong Ling continued to say. Even Silver Moon Knights and Legend Knights are unwilling to enter the mountain range of desolation. There isn't much to be gained from the entering the mountains, and the deeper you go, the more likely you are to meet even more frightening magical beasts. That's right Shui Ying, Tong San interjected. In our past adventures, we didn't even think about entering the mountain range of desolation. We wanted to kill a rank for magical beast just like you. But if you are unlucky, you might encounter rank 5, or even 6 magical beasts instead of a rank 4 magical beast. You'll lose your life for sure if that happens. They were both very anxious. The mountain range of desolation. It was the nest of the greatest enemies of the entire human race, magical beasts. To enter it would really be to gamble on one's life. You two didn't let me finish. Shui Ying replied with a smile. I intend to enter the mountain range of desolation, but only the outer 1,500 km perimeter of it. Hunting magical beasts is merely secondary, my main purpose is to go hunt the Bent Blade Union. The Bent Blade Union. Zong Ling and Tong San said simultaneously, eyes wide with surprise. Within the 1,500 km, because the army regularly wiped out magical beasts in the perimeter, the magical beasts were pushed back. Generally, only a mass of low-ranked magical beasts would be left. The struggle between the army and the beasts was endless, because every time the soldiers managed to wipe out the magical beasts, they would once again emerge from the depths of 
Normally, Shui Ying had strength that reached the peak of a meteor knight's. But if he were to use all his energy for a burst of power, his strength would rise to the realm of a silver moon knight. His spear technique was approaching the realm of a great master, and his dochi circulation method was inherited from the dark ice knight, Ji Yu Yuan Han. Your only weak point is that you've seen too little blood, Zong Ling reasoned. Although you've executed all of the criminals within the Snow Eagle territory, you still haven't experienced enough life or death battles. When you spar with us, it's just sparring after all. I know, which is why I'm going to the mountain range of desolation in search of the Bent Blade Union's hideout. During my search, I will definitely encounter many magical beasts. This will allow me to temper myself in battle, Shui Ying said. It won't be easy to find the Bent Blade Union's hideout. Zong Ling felt slightly uneasy. You'll definitely encounter many magical beasts during this task. There's even a small chance that you might encounter a formidable magical beast. Although it was the outer 1,500 kilometers perimeter, those who were insanely powerful, for example a transcendent or a rank 6 magical beast would hardly ever appear. However, a rank 4 or 5 magical beast. Every once in a while, one would definitely appear. These magical beasts knew instinctively that they stood no chance against the army and would escape whenever the army raided the perimeter, but if Shui Ying went into the mountain range alone, the beasts would ambush and kill him without hesitation. My luck shouldn't be that bad, Shui Ying said. Furthermore, my spear technique is rather good for defense. It should be able to save my life. Moreover, if I want to earn the 50,000 gold coins, what other way is there to earn such a sum except for heading to the mountain range of desolation? Dong Bo Shui Ying said as he shook his head. Earning money without risks. If a meteor knight became a high-ranking bodyguard for a rich family, he would be very safe. However, one's annual salary would only be about three to five thousand gold coins as well. If he wanted to get a hold of several tens of thousands of gold coins, then he definitely had to take great risks. Fine then. Said Zong Ling I'll go with you. At the very least, I've been to the perimeter many times. You've been there before Uncle Zong. Shui Ying asked, his eyes wide in astonishment. Ian. After your parents bought Snow Eagle territory, I went to the outer area of the mountain range of desolation to temper and cultivate myself. As a serpent demon royalty, Zong Ling possessed his own pride. He was very harsh on himself, and he always wanted to break through from the heaven rank into the meteor rank. When you go to the mountain range of desolation, you must listen to your uncle Zong and be very careful. Instructed Tong San. After preparing for five days, Shui Ying and Zong Ling set off in the morning, bringing one hundred soldiers with him. The castle's drawbridge had already been lowered. Big brother, come back home soon. Ching Shi yelled from the hilltop while Tong San stood by his side. Ching Shi, don't worry. Just stay home and obediently listen to what Uncle Tong says, Shui Ying yelled back from the distance. I know already. Ching Shi heavily nodded his head, but within his heart, he was reluctant to part with Shui Ying. Ever since he was young, he had never separated from his older brother for too long. This time, his brother had to go out for at least ten days to half a month. However, he didn't know that this time, Shui Ying's outing was for the sake of obtaining his tuition fee. Shui Ying and his cavalry division were very relaxed during their journey. When night fell, they were already only about fifty kilometers outside the edge of the mountain range of desolation. The cavalrymen began pitching camp. They started hanging pots to cook. Old Yang. Shui Ying and Zong Ling were currently with a person whose face was covered in a huge beard. This person was called Yang Cheng. He was an earth knight loyal to the Dongbo clan, as well as the captain of this troop of a hundred men. Zong Ling said, Tomorrow morning, the Lord and I will be entering the mountain range. 
I'll leave this camp to you. Master Zhong Ling, Lord, you can leave it to me without any worries. I can definitely handle this small matter to your satisfaction, but my lords, you must be careful, Yang Cheng worriedly said. When I was in the army, although the army wiped out the beasts in the outer areas, it was an entire army that was dispatched. No one ever went anywhere by themselves. Moreover, magical beasts that could hide the heavens and cover the earth would fearlessly rush forth and kill the enemy. Of the ten brothers who had joined the army with me, only three or four safely retired. All the others perished in the mountain range of desolation. Shui Ying nodded. Read Lat. Chapter 17 Days in the Mountain Translator, Radiant Editor, Radiant Deep in the mountains, there was a clearing. The entire forest was silent and the trees so dense that not even a patch of sunlight could reach the ground. It was damp and gloomy, and much of the ground was still covered in snow. A silver-haired snake man and a black-clothed young man held their weapons, constantly on alert. Uncle Zone, it has been almost an hour since we entered, yet we haven't met even a single magical beast. Sai, Yu, Zhong Ling shook his head helplessly, his nephew might seem mature, but he still somewhat had the temperament of a teen. He whispered, we only just entered the mountain and are only at the most outer part of the outer perimeter. Naturally, to encounter a magical beast here would be very unusual, but the deeper we proceed, the easier it will be to encounter one. By that time, the only way to survive will be by depending on your strength. En. Dong Bo Shui Ying nodded lightly. Sha tilde tilde tilde. Dong Bo Shui Ying's ears moved as he heard a faint sound. His arm immediately shot out and blocked the Zhong Ling who was walking beside him. Zhong Ling's heart tightened, although he hadn't heard the sound himself, he knew that Dong Bo Shui Ying's hearing had become extremely sharp after awakening his primordial blood. It's there. Dong Bo Shui Ying stared at the front left. Zhong Ling also stared in that direction. Rustling noises could be heard from a distant bramble as a figure with four thin black hoofs slowly appeared. Its appearance was quite similar to that of a wolf's, but it was one foot smaller. Its body was covered with thin, black, densely packed scales. A pair of ice-cold dark pupils looked at the two humans calmly. Black-scaled jackal. Both Dong Bo Shui Ying and Zhong Ling's hearts tightened. They had met a troublesome magical beast right after entering the mountain range of desolation. The black-scaled jackal was a magical beast of the third rank. Black-scaled jackals were extremely calm but vicious creatures. They preferred to attack in groups, and their claws and teeth were covered in acute poison. Why was it rank 3? Each individual jackal's strength was that of a heaven rank knights. They lived in small groups, but the group of black-scaled jackals which came from the brambles in front was quite large, there were no less than thirty-five. Even a rank for magical beast by itself would be torn to shreds. This is troublesome. Zhong Ling was somewhat nervous. Shui Ying, you must be careful. En, Uncle Zhong Ling, protect yourself, leave them to me. Dong Bo Shui Ying took a deep breath, his breathing adjusting to become stabler and stronger. He stared at this group of black-scaled jackals. These numerous black-scaled jackals started to separate, surrounding Dong Bo Shui Ying and Zhong Ling in a fan formation. Being stared at by so many pairs of dark red eyes at the same time. Dong Bo Shui Ying's heart was slightly anxious. His willpower was amazing and the level of his spear techniques were high, but it was his first time facing such formidable opponents. Raw tilde 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 gloomy and unpleasant sounds came from the black scaled jackals at the very back. Show show show. All the black scaled jackals suddenly leaped and attacked from all directions. Even a meteor knight wouldn't be able to withstand being attacked by so many heaven ranked knights on all sides at the same time. Die! Dong Bo Shui Ying's spear moved. Shu! His spear flashed like lightning. The instant his spear thrust forward, 
countless number of snowflakes appeared, creating an incomparably beautiful scene. The black-scaled jackal that suffered the attack immediately brandished its sharp claws to block the spear. Kai tilde 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 in the split second that the head of the spear was stopped, the entire spear abruptly spun, creating a torque that split open the sharp claw. P.U. Kai The tip of the spear stabbed into mandible of the black-scaled jackal and ran all the way through to the back of its head. The rank 3 black-scaled jackal magical beast's body twitched until finally, there was no response. The instant it was killed, Shui Ying rapidly withdrew his spear, and like lightning, stabbed again. His withdrawing and stabbing was like a viper flicking its tongue. P.U. Another black-scaled jackal was killed on the spot. These black-scaled jackals were all experts at close quarters fighting, but Dong Bo Shui Ying's spear technique that had been tempered under ten years of hardship and madness was truly too formidable. Roar 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 tilde 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 a cacophony of muffled roars resounded from the black-scaled jackals as they continued besieging them without slowing down at all. Within that short period of time, Shui Ying had been able to kill three black-scaled jackals. Suddenly, eight black-scaled jackals simultaneously threw themselves at him. Get lost! His spear was like shadow, rapidly whipping and striking. It was just like those long days in the past when Shui Ying thrashed the refiner dummy, now, he beat four jackals with only one wave of his spear. Another four jackals were knocked back by his reverse sweep. Shui Ying had the absolute advantage in strength, but one man could hardly win against a group. The true threat of a black-scaled jackal pack was in their endless and fearless attacks. Shui Ying, hurry, hurry. Just run if you cannot block them. Zongling entwined his tail high around a nearby tree. His speed and flexibility had protected his life when he'd entered the mountain range of desolation before. I know. Shui Ying's attention was highly focused. Even though he was an expert at spear techniques, he was still affected by the pressure of being in a life or death situation. Besides, the bones and scales of the jackals were very hard. It took time to pierce and pull out, thus slowing his spear down. I have to move in order to avoid their siege. Shui Ying started implementing his experience from his usual training. In the castle, he often allowed a large group of soldiers to besiege him. Shui Ying fought them with his spear techniques by moving nimbly about, dodging and weaving. Of course, they were all unarmed in matches. Who, who? Shui Ying gradually mastered it. He would occasionally make small movements that would reduce the number of jackals he had to face. So the jackal pack lost their target. Allowing him face to only three jackals at a time. P.U. 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 The snow was flying and blood was splashing. One after another, the jackals fell. Peng. Peng. Shui Ying's actions were becoming more and more natural and fluent. He imbued the spear with power and whipped a black-scaled jackal with it. The jackal twitched, its body weirdly twisted and its bones shattered. Standing high in a tree, Zhong Ling looked down at the ground and beamed. He adapted to this faster than I expected. He can already bring out all of his strength in this battle of life and death. Zhong Ling nodded. He might be fully adjusted after two or three days. Who? A short, panicked roar sounded from the pack of black-scaled jackals. The remaining jackals immediately fled in different directions. Shui Ying stopped after killing two more beasts. Who, who? Only then did Shui Ying let out a sigh of relief. His breathing was heavy and his blood circulated quickly. How was it? Zhong Ling jumped down from high up. It was really different. Shui Ying nodded and said, Three years ago, when I fought with the territory's prisoner, I felt this tension as well, but that was a one-on-one -on -one battle. I have gained some insights into my spear techniques from this group battle. Being an expert of spear technique merely signified a high level of achievement in spear techniques. However, in a real combat, how would one know how to link together attacking, 
defending, and their foot techniques. These were all skills learned from combat. In a battle of life and death, blood boils within the body and strength rushes forth. The control needed over the whole body is even more fine. Shui Ying said. This is the creature's instinct under the threat of death. Zhong Ling said. I might break through in my spear technique earlier than I'd expected. From the depths of Shui Ying's heart, his blood had been ignited. Ten years of hard practice had given him amazing skill. Wasn't the best place to display his skill in the mountain. Let's go. There is a heavy smell of blood here. More beasts will come soon. Zhong Ling urged. Hem Shui Ying noed. They didn't care about the rank three beasts' bodies. Although they carried some value, how much could they possibly carry with them? They weren't worth the effort. As for the Shui Ying storage talisman, he feared that it could only store one black scale jackal. Within the mountain range of desolation, Shui Ying was like a dragon who had entered the sea. He was unceasingly accumulating combat experience as well as improving his spear technique. Every single night, they would immediately return to their camp. One of them was a noble of the Serpent Clan and the other had awakened his primordial bloodline. They ran extremely quickly, maintaining a speed of 30 miles per hour when they were returning, even if it was in the mountain range of desolation. Although they took a long time when searching, it didn't take long for them to return. They had to stay in the camp during the nights, after all, they needed to rest properly. It would be too exhausting for them to spend the nights in the mountains. Time passed by day by day. Shui Ying's progress surprised Zhong Ling. He could see Shui Ying becoming more and more experienced. With each battle, Shui Ying gradually perfect. Chapter 18, Raid Translator, Radiant Editor, Radiant On a mountain top within mountain range of desolation, Shui Ying and Zhong Ling squatted while looking into the distance. Uncle Zhong. Shui Ying asked him, it's been twelve days since we started searching the mountain range of desolation, but we still haven't found any traces of the Bent Blade Union. Every time the Bent Blade Union fled into mountain range of desolation, they would appear around this area. According to the information collected over the past few years, the area we outlined shouldn't be wrong. Their main goal for this adventure in the mountain range of desolation was to hunt the Bent Blade Union. The Bend Blade Union had been the scourge of Water Wright's town for a very long time. Every time, people would see them come out and do evil things, then flee after, so they knew approximately where the Union was. They also had to investigate any camps they had outside their base. They had chosen to camp in the center of an area that penetrated 250 kilometers into the mountain range. That was the target area that Shui Ying and his aides chose. They believed the Bent Blade Union was within this area. The bandits of the Bent Blade Union often come and go, so naturally, there must be a relatively safe path for them. However, it's the mountain range of desolation. Magic beasts may show up at any time, so they probably don't go very deep into the mountains. Otherwise, it would take about 15 hours for a round trip. Their pace is not much faster than ours. Many of them aren't even knights, Zhong Ling said. Let's take our time, we will find them eventually. En. A range of 250 kilometers did not seem like a big area, but it was still difficult for two people to search. Anyway, the base of the Bent Blade Union had to be some secret place. Shui Ying and Zhong Ling kept searching carefully. They occasionally encountered magic beasts, but because his power rivaled that of a silver moon knight and he also had his powerful spear technique, Shui Ying could hold them back. There were rarely magic beasts that exceeded rank 3 in the periphery anyways. Hu 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 tilde tilde tilde. In the dark mountains, snow wouldn't melt for thousands of years. A chill filled the air. Shui Ying and Zhong Ling quietly searched for traces of the Bent Blade Union. A. Shui Ying's ears twitched. 
He said in a low voice, Uncle Zone, let's go there and have a look, as he pointed to a distant highland. What did you find? Zone Ling asked as he quietly walked in that direction with Shui Ying. You'll know when you see it. Shui Ying carefully climbed up to the highland. Zone Ling followed him. They hid themselves behind the highland and looked into the distance. In front was a big, beautiful lake which resembled jade. A large group gathered around the lake, splintering off into smaller groups of twos or threes. They were all either drinking or resting on the grass. At first glance, it seemed that the group had about two or even three hundred wolves. The wolves were much larger than the black-scaled jackals. Each wolf had smooth white fur that even rivaled that of a frost pegasus. The Silver Moon Wolf Pack. Zong Ling gulped, his face a little pale. And the Wolf King. Shui Ying looked at the wolf farthest away. The largest wolf on the lakeside was the Wolf King. About ten relatively larger wolves surrounded their king. I never thought that I'd really find the Silver Moon Wolf King. Shui Ying smiled, but his face was bitter. Let's go. There is no chance for us to win. Zong Ling shaked his head. Shui Ying stared at the wolf. That's right. Not even a bit of a chance. Even as a rank three magical beast, the silver moon wolf was still much larger than a black scaled jackal. The wolf had a strong impact force as well. When a 4,000 kilograms wolf ran, its impact force could exceed 10,000 kilograms. Shui Ying could defeat five jackals with one single swipe, but a wolf. Shui Ying could only swipe one wolf at a time. Even five meteor knights couldn't defeat three hundred wolves. And the strongest wolf king. By moving nimbly, I can control the battle so I'm only facing a few wolves at a time. Shui Ying planned in his heart, but it probably won't be so easy if the wolves are under the king's command. Once I'm surrounded by the wolves, there will be no chance for me to escape. Go! Shui Ying chose to give up. Shui Ying had entered the mountain range for quite some period of time, so he clearly understood how scary these magic beasts could be. If he went to fight with the wolves, his chance of winning was less than 10%, and the probability of his death could be 80%. It wasn't worth the risk. Three days later, Shui Ying spared no effort to search for the Bent Blade Union base. Indeed, the Bent Blade Union hid themselves very well. Shui Ying gritted his teeth. They had searched the area twice since half a month ago. They fear that their nest might get discovered. Zong Ling smiled. Shui Ying, you need to be more patient. Your uncle... Parents and I spent three whole months searching for a precious deposit. Did you find it? Shui Ying asked. No, Zong Ling said. No? Shui Ying stared blankly back. He thought Uncle Zong mentioned this because it was a big game. Zong Ling smiled. What, is it weird? Does searching for a treasure means you'll get it eventually? Most things in this world won't go as we wish. Shui Ying nodded. This stirred up his feelings. In this world, nine out of ten things wouldn't satisfy people. Although Shui Ying thought himself better than Uncle Zong in some fields like finance and cultivation techniques, but he knew little of philosophy. The two men kept searching. Right at this moment, a thin, small, Four-legged beast with a vague dusky figure stood in a tree and looked down at Shui Ying and Zong Ling. Shui Ying and Zong Ling hadn't noticed it at all. Sure. With an easy jump, the beast landed on another tree. It continued to stare at them. Even though Shui Ying had keen senses, he hadn't noticed its movements. It had a streamlined figure and was as big as a black-scaled jackal. But its fur was like silk giving the illusion that its body was like that of a ghost. This was a horrible hunter, the rank 5 magic beast, Shadow Leopard. A frightening Shadow Leopard lurked silently within the shadows. 
By the time it showed its fangs, its prey would usually already dead. It was the top predator in the mountain range. The legendary rank 6 magic beast, Shadow Leopard King, could conceal its whole body in the shadows. People couldn't see it even if they kept their eyes wide open. Who, who, who? The Shadow Leopard moved towards them quietly, locking onto the young man in black as its target. As a top class predator, it could feel that the young man in black was more threatening than the silver haired serpent. It would be easy as long as the young man was killed. Show. Killing intent flashed in the shadow leopard's grey eyes as it suddenly leapt out. A grey shadow. Too fast. Even Shui Ying's maximum speed was slower than the speed of a shadow leopard. Its speed was a headache for even silver moon knights. Mn. While walking with Uncle Zong, Shui Ying's complexion suddenly changed. His hair stood on end and his heart clenched. Die. There was no time to look back or otherwise defend. Shui Ying could only rush forward and stab backwards. His stab was powerful enough to block a rank 4 magic beast, but the shadow leopard attacking them was a rank 5 magic beast. The leopard's claws smashed onto the shaft of the spear. It pushed the spear downwards, jumped up, and scratched Shui Ying's back. A horrible impact pushed Shui Ying's body forward and down to the ground. Peng. As a great master in spearmanship, Shui Ying was able to spin his spear around while being attacked by the Shadow Leopard's sharp claws. He swung down on the Shadow Leopard, giving it no time to dodge. Although Shui Ying's body was flying forward, he managed to flip around and make this powerful attack. The Shadow Leopard fell onto the ground, but its soft body quickly absorbed the force and it fled away. Shui Ying landed while rolling and crouched on the ground. Gripping his spear, Shui Ying glowered at the Shadow Leopard. His back was on fire and his organs were shaking. He tasted blood. P.U. Shui Ying spat the blood out, dyeing his teeth red. He unwaveringly watched the Shadow Leopard. Chapter 19 Life or Death in an Instant Translator, Radiant Editor, Radiant it's a shadow leopard. Zong Ling was shocked. His combat experience prompted him to retreat rapidly. Show show show. Thanks to the power of his tail, he was able to escape to the top of a remote tree with just three breathtaking jumps. But the shadow leopard's murky pupils merely glanced at Zong Ling coldly before continuing to gaze at Shui Ying. It didn't care about the silver-haired serpent man. The leopard was a level 5 magic beast famous for its speed, it could kill a heaven-ranked knight with just one attack. Besides, the leopard's body was so strong that there was no way a heaven-ranked knight could injure it, so it ignored Zong Ling and focused on Shui Ying. This young man in black, was a big threat. He was able to counter the sneak attack. Uncle Zong, you should leave. Run as far as you can. Shui Ying said in a low voice. Shui Ying, be careful. Shadow leopards are fast. Zong Ling knew he couldn't help so he retreated. Shui Ying observed the shadow leopard closely and smiled. I never imagined I would encounter a level 5 magic beast. He released the straps that ran around his chest and the weapon box fell onto the ground. It had been completely trashed by the leopard's attack. Shui Ying's coat wasn't that much better. Fortunately, Shui Ying hadn't been severely wounded due to his inner armor. He, he tilde tilde the shadow leopard panted lightly as it circled Shui Ying. Its steps were incredibly light, the pads on its feet muffling the sound of its footsteps. Shui Ying's eyes followed the leopard. One man, one magic beast. They looked into each other's eyes. It was life or death in an instant. Shua Shua. The shadow leopard suddenly burst into action, fainting to one side before instantly charging toward Shui Ying the moment its paws touched the ground. Die for me. The spear was like a snake in Shui Ying's hand, shifting in front of the leopard within a moment. The leopard kept its eyes on Shui Ying. 
It rushed forth again, its four paws practically hovering about the ground as it moved forward softly with lightning speed. It kept changing its directions, from one direction to another in order to evade the sharp point of Shui Ying's spear. Again and again, it would pounce towards Shui Ying, then suddenly change directions. Shui Ying focused his entire strength on defending. Shua Shua Shua. The Shadow Leopard became a phantom demon as it continuously circled around Shui Ying. In response, the point of Shui Ying's flying snow god spear turned into countless phantom images and created an illusion of numerous drifting snowflakes. Too fast, simply too fast. Not enough, this still isn't enough. Shui Ying was aware of how slow he was. Although his profound ice spear technique was skilled enough to become famous, compared to the Shadow Leopard, the gap between them was abundantly clear. The Shadow Leopard circled around Shui Ying as if it was in its own domain. Again and again, it would look for an opportunity. This kind of phantom movement wasn't even the limit for the Shadow Leopard. It was simply a basic movement for it. Within the Shadow Leopard's tranquil eyes, everything was in its control. Hong. The atmosphere began to twist as the Shadow Leopard suddenly accelerated and abruptly began attacking Shui Ying. This is the moment. Shui Ying said as his eyes turned red. A red aura began emitting from his body. It was at this moment that Shui Ying released the full power of his primordial bloodline. Power burst. Hong. The point of the spear spun and teared apart the atmosphere as it thrust towards the shadow leopard that was streaking across the sky. The shadow leopard felt alarmed. The speed of this spear completely surpassed its expectations. If it had been prepared for this spear beforehand, it would have been able to effortlessly dodge it, but it had used all of its strength and was already in front of Shui Ying now. Their distance was too close and its speed too high. It was impossible for it to dodge. Hu tilde 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 it issued out a cruel roar and swiped at the spear with its front pair of claws. The rotating spear moved as if it was a large wandering snake. This swipe made the spinning spear lose most of its impact, but it still thrusted towards the shadow leopard's abdomen. The shadow leopard twisted its body like as if it didn't have any bones at all in a bid to avoid this terrifying spear. Sigh. The spear streaked across the shadow leopard's soft white abdomen. A trace of blood appeared. Borrowing the force of the spear, the shadow leopard leapt towards an elevated tree branch opposite of Shui Ying. On its abdomen was a two-foot-long cut. This cut, however, had already been forced closed, blood dripping slightly. Its dull grey eyes flashed with a cruel madness as it glared at the Shui Ying below. In spite of all that, I still haven't killed you. You sure are lucky. Shui Ying said as he attentively watched the the blood-red aura on Shui Ying's body soared as he gripped his spear tightly and thrusted at the shadow leopard, which dodged to the side in response. Get lost. The spear thrust into nothing but air. Shui Ying immediately changed his thrust into a sweep. The might of this spear's sweep could cause the heaven to fall and rend the earth. The shadow leopard displayed frightened expression. If this sweep connected with the shadow leopard, it would result in Shui Ying's victory. Even if it didn't kill the Shadow Leopard, the sweep would still gravely injure it. How could it have known that Shui Ying had awoken the primordial bloodline of power? As the spear swept across, all of its power passed through the shaft. Only with this would Shui Ying be able to display his advantage. The Shadow Leopard's body undulated as if it was water. Its claws lightly held onto the spear and used the force of the spear to minimize the damage inflicted on it. Hong tilde 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 following the sweep of the spear, a tree that had been struck on the side began rumbling before splitting apart in a big explosion. The entire tree had been cut off. With that explosion, the tree began to collapse. Die for me. Shui Ying rushed forth, thrusting, slashing and sweeping with his spear. A continuous torrent of attacks enveloped the Shadow Leopard. In response, it unceasingly evaded as it retreated. 
It seemed that the surrounding mountain forest was out of luck. Shui Ying's spear was able to shatter and completely penetrate a boulder that needed two or three people to wrap around it. How could these trees possibly bear this destruction? The whole time, they were fighting close quarters. Shui Ying had long since discovered that Uncle Zong was hiding far away. This let him secretly heave a sigh of relief, but he still felt very anxious within his heart. This was because under the influence of his power burst, he would only able to hold some advantages with his frantic assault. The Shadow Leopard, on the other hand, was able to immediately catch up whenever he retreated. Thus, it was basically impossible for him to escape. The Shadow Leopard was simply too fast. If the Shadow Leopard wished to stalk them afterwards, Shui Ying wouldn't be able to do anything about it. What should I do? I'm continuously losing strength and can't hold on much longer. After using his special power, Shui Ying felt that his energy was draining drastically. Once he used up his energy, he would die. He he tilde tilde tilde. The Shadow Leopard was an experienced hunter, constantly looking for the opportunity to strike. Finally, Shui Ying's fierce consumption of his physical strength had finally opened up a gap in his attacks. The Shadow Leopard moved like lightning and appeared right in front of Shui Ying. Not good. Shui Ying heart shuddered and his scalp felt numb. He was suddenly faced with a crisis of death. Just die for me already. Die. 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 Shui Ying went crazy and his eyes reddened. Either you or I will die. He struck out his spear with all his might. This was his last struggle. He struggled just like a wild beast would when facing death. Although Shui Ying was facing a death crisis, this was also an opportunity to cultivate his instinct to survive. His entire body surged with energy. Time seemed to slow down as the shadow leopard vicious teeth could be seen clearly. Who? The breeze generated from the fight felt refreshing against his face. Who a tilde who a tilde who a tilde the circulation of his blood could be felt as clearly as if it was a surging river. Sigh 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 tilde 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 his muscles and bones were also transmitting their power to him. Power, perfect and pure. When Shui Ying faced the threatening death crisis, he instinctively broke through the lack of comprehension of his power. His blood flowed, his bones and muscle connected together and transmitted power. He could clearly feel everything. It was so beautiful. At that moment, he felt as if all of his power was within his control. His control over his power was incomparably delicate and didn't waste any of it. He even had a surplus of energy. Who? His whole body's strength was transmitting like water. He had never had such wonderful control over his own body before. His whirling spear pierced through the vast sky as its speed suddenly increased sharply. P.U.G. In a flash, the point of the spear withdrew from the stupefied shadow leopard's abdomen and was thrust into the back of the shadow leopard. While holding onto the spear, Shui Ying saw that the impaled shadow leopard was still twisting and struggling to break free. Its blood flowed unceasingly. Shui Ying stared at the shadow leopard, and the shadow leopard stared back. Within the dull grey eyes of the shadow leopard, however, there was panic, fear, anger and anxiety. Its powerful life force allowed it to struggle for nearly half a minute. It was only when the last of its blood flowed onto the ground that it finally succumbed to D. Chapter 20, Mysterious Ice Spear Technique Translator, Radiant Editor, Radiant Zhong Ling landed. When he saw the chaos the forest had become, his heart filled with fear. Shui Ying is definitely fine. You're definitely okay. Zhong Ling's anxious heart tightened as he followed the traces of destruction. Damn it, damn it. Why is it that I haven't become a meteor knight even until now? I could have helped Shui Ying if I had broken through earlier. He would not have been alone in that hopeless situation. Dong Bo Lion Mo Yang Yu, his life and death friends, 
had ordered him to take care of their kids before they were taken away. Zhongling's fondness of Shui Ying had grown as he watched him grow from a crying baby into a young man. It was as if he were his own blood. Zhongling's worries increased over time as he continued traveling through the decimated forest. Absolutely nothing must happen to him. Nothing can happen to him. Zhongling rushed forward with great speed, jumping from branch to branch. Who? Zhongling was agile, his tail pulling him forward like a slingshot to leap dozens of meters from tree to tree. In midair, he spotted a youngster clothed in black standing in the distance. Zhongling released a deep sigh of relief the moment he realized who the black clothed youngster was. Shui Ying. Zhongling hurried over to him. Uncle Zhong. Shui Ying pulled his spear out from the corpse of the Shadow Leopard. You killed the Shadow Leopard? Zhongling couldn't believe his own eyes when he saw the corpse. This was supposed to be a terrifying predator, famed for its high speed and agility. Shui Ying smiled. Luck. It really was luck. Any less, and I would have been the one to die. This was the first time he had faced death. Although he had faced magical beasts before, the sharp claws and teeth of those beasts had allowed him to polish his body as well as experience a taste of death. That was in group combat however, something he had the absolute advantage in. This one shadow leopard, on the other hand, was able to completely suppress him in all regards. Shua, Shua, Shua. Shui Ying stretched out his left hand. A spear sack appeared within his palm. Inside were at least twelve short silver spears. This spear sack was originally stored within his storage pendant. Enter. He put down the spear sack and picked up the body of the shadow leopard, bending it a little to push it in. Whoosh. The shadow leopard vanished without a trace. There was only a little room to the side of the sack left. Uncle Zone, let's leave quickly. The smell of the blood will attract other beasts. Shui Ying carried the spear sack on his back and took out the flying snow god spear. No need to worry too much, normal beasts would not dare to come near us due to the shadow leopard's scent. After that large fight, it would be better if you rest well first. Zong Ling also gave a relaxed smile. During the return trip, Shui Ying was in a good mood. Even though he had experienced a life-threatening fight, a shadow leopard was worth 100,000 gold coins. A shadow leopard's satin-like pelt was able to imbue items with cloaking effects so it was considered a precious refining material. Naturally, the shadow leopard's pelt would fall into the hands of the rich nobility. This was an item that was much beloved by them. The shadow leopard's pelt was both beautiful as well as honorable when worn. How many people would gaze upon it with admiration and envy? For Shui Ying, it didn't matter. What counted was that it had brought them money. Within the camp inside the mountain range of desolation. For hours had already passed. The sky turned pitch black as Shui Ying and Zong Ling hurried back to their camp. After eating dinner, Zong Ling rested, but Shui Ying didn't. Shua, Shua tilde tilde tilde. The bonfire in the camp was always lit in order to keep the cold at bay. Shui Ying was sitting down cross-legged near the bonfire, the flying snow spear laid across his legs. H.S. eyes were closed as he sat there whilst the fire illuminated his face. Silence. The night was very silent. Shui Ying was carefully inspecting his body, feeling every muscle and bone, the expansion and contraction of his inner organs while his blood surged like a river. He had already reached the realm of power perfectly as one. With his current attentive understanding, he would consolidate it to further familiarize himself with it. Rise. Shui Ying stood up suddenly. Holding his flying snow god spear, he started to practice his spear techniques. Being one with the spear was like being a flood dragon. The shadow of the spear flashed while the snow danced wildly. Fine spear, fine technique. 
Shui Ying stopped and looked at the flying snow spear in his hand with a pleased expression. If a spear was fast enough, the human eye would see multiple spears attacking simultaneously, this phenomenon was called the persistence of vision. Of course, different people had different degra. For great spear masters, however, they were able to perfectly take advantage of this power. They were even able to use this strength to execute even faster attacks. Power perfectly as one. I've attained the seven spear realm. The flying snow god spear is able to perfectly utilize all of its power and hence improve the spear's might. I can reach the eight spear realm with speed alone. When I burst out the power of my primordial bloodline, then I can attain the tenth spear realm. Shui Ying felt excited. The shadow leopard's death wasn't in vain. During that last desperate strike by Shui Ying, his spear's speed had reached the formidable level of the tenth spear realm. This speed was able to omnipotently suppress even Silver Moon Knights. Those who were weaker than Silver Moon Knights might not even be able to block many blows and die from a single strike. This still isn't my limit. My spear can still go faster. Shui Ying began to cultivate the transcendent spear technique his father had left behind for him, the mysterious ice spear technique. A powerful transcendent knight's secrets. He would only be able to learn the first level of this technique after becoming a great spear master. Who? Dochi revolved within his body, maximizing his strength. The spear whirled as if it was a large python, spinning in an astonishing arc. While withdrawing his spear, he would reverse the direction of the rotation. He struck out and retracted it. This powerful rotation was reversed, concealing the rotational strength of the shaft of the spear. Even spear experts would feel their palms grow numb in the face of such formidable power. Shui Ying had unleashed this power. This was the strength that the mysterious ice spear technique needed to take advantage of. That's not right. The force exerted is wrong. The talk isn't pure enough. Shui Ying practiced again and again with his spear. Hu la. Hu la. In the midst of night at the camp, one burst after another of what seemed to be a screaming voice was heard. This made the scalps of all of the soldiers standing guard grow numb. As they watched their young master practice his spear techniques beside the bonfire, they couldn't help but revere him even more. The young master truly is the young master. Amazing. Even after coming to the mountain range of desolation, he continues to train like crazy during the night. It's no wonder he's so powerful. The young master was already training like a mad devil when he was eight years old. I couldn't possibly endure such suffering. Those soldiers continued to quietly gossip amongst themselves. Shui Ying continued to practice the first level of the mysterious ice spear techniques many techniques. Even though the mysterious ice knight, senior Ji Yu Yuan Han, had written highly detailed descriptions of the techniques, it was still difficult to learn it. Luckily for Shui Ying, as a great spear master, he had an extremely fine control over the spear so there was still some hope for him to learn it. The night quickly passed and dawn came. Sigh. The spear struck out. It was like a huge python rotating its body in a flash. A very short sound resonated. It was not the normal whirring sound but a very short sigh. The arc of the spear as it rotated could be seen with the naked eye as it retracted, only to quickly strike out again. Shui Ying showed an elated expression. There was a subtle blood-red aura that suddenly surrounded around his body. He had completely used up all of his power and the terrifying spear technique was delivered to his heart's content. Xiao 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 Xiao. Snowflakes drifted around the spear. When the spear struck, it seemed as if it was stationary in the midst of the snowflakes. After the twelfth strike, the stationary spear among the snowflakes disappeared. This was proof of reaching the terrifying twelve spears realm. The first level of the mysterious ice spear technique, floating snow, clearly had a large amplification effect on one's speed. 
The mysterious Ice Knight Ji Yuan Han Spearman ship was originally famous for its speed, and the second and third levels were even faster. But they were also much harder to master. Twelve Spears Realm. Shui Ying smiled. I have finally succeeded in training the first stage of mysterious ice spear technique, floating snow. After becoming a great spear master and learning the mysterious ice spear technique, Shui Ying's power had increased by leaps and bounds.